been a wonderful morning. I'm feeling like joining you. <laughs> but then uh, there would be neither any ambition nor an age, and a, and an age bar. I feel inducted today. I really feel inducted today. It's a, it's a very unusual experience for me and not expected. I didn't expect Mr. Marva to be such a great teacher. <laughs> He's wonderful. It's been very educative for me, to be honest. And certainly a new definition of education. It helps me too. <laughs> now, so much well has been said by your faculty and the, uh, the faculty of the ABS. What more is left? You just have to consume this. You just have to imbibe it. You just have to drink it in. Soak it, make your notes, and live up to it. Everything has been said, everything right has been said, exhaustively after one speaker after the other. And it's also been reiterated. So therefore, I, I, I'm in a dilemma. What do I do? Because everything has, right has been said to you. Do you want to ask a few questions? Then I have, a, I have something to share with you. Three questions, so that I read your mind. What's still in your mind? May I? If I have your permission? Okay, let's have about three, four questions. So I want to understand your mind at this young age when you're joining a whole new career and aspirational, very aspirational, truly inspired, otherwise you wouldn't have been here. So what are your primary three questions to me who's lived a life? Who lived a life and is still living a life? What are your three questions? Yeah. manage your professional and personal life? Oh, that's your challenge. <laughs> How do you balance the personal and the professional? It comes out from every woman almost. <laughs> it's coming, re repeatedly coming. And men don't ask this question. <laughs> it's only the women who ask this question. Because they are the ones who have to rig. The challenge is for them. Men's life gets balanced. Either they have a mother or they have a mother in their, in their spouse. Right? That's the reason. I'll answer that. Thanks. Good question. I would have not addressed this. I would not have addressed this if you had not asked me. Any other? Second? Yeah? Good morning, ma'am. How do you deal with the people who have... Take a mic. Good morning, ma'am. How do you deal with the people who have mindset like male and female are two different... My God, that's... Oh, gender issues coming. <laughs> Fantastic. This is been not covered at all. I'm so glad you're coming up with a new aspect of uh, understanding. So second, how do you deal with closed minds? Yeah. Okay, good. And I have uh, one question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, my dear friends, Her Excellency Kiran Bedi, fearless governess, one of the finest girls. <laughs> I want to know a little more about this walk, how you got into it, and how you spend your uh, time as a lieutenant governor. Oh, God, that's another area. <laughs> okay, we'll stick to these three. That's plenty. That's plenty. I'll answer these as I answer the uh, explanation of what Mr. Dr. Marwa has mentioned. First of all, I want to share with you that Mr. Marwa and I have a very special relationship. His cousin was my police commissioner, Mr. Ved Marwa. Very dear, dear person to me. I started my policing career with Mr. Ved Marwa. But for him, I would not have got a field assignment. He is the one who, as a young 25-year-old, uh, 26-year-old IPS officer, he sent me to the field and said, go and work in the field. Whereas those days, they were never, first of all, no women were there and would not have. Because why? He was a very good man. He was a Pathan. He was a Pathan and he and I share Pathan roots as well. So I, whenever, so Mr. Marwa and I ring a bell. It's Mr. Uh, Ved Marwa, very dear senior most. And he was very fond of me. He actually, every time, took me out of the office and took me into the field. Bar bar. And in fact, he one day went to Rajiv Gandhi uh, after the 1984 riots. And Mr. Marwa was brought back to Delhi police as the police commissioner. And you know what he said? I want a team. I want a team, sir. 
and he included me in that team and said, I want her back. Because I was in the sidelines, and he said, I want Kiran Bailey back in the team. So, we're going to know what to do. So, Mr. Martin, I have a very special uh, emotional connect to a cousin brother and my police chief. So, I want to thank him for inviting me, and I'm so thrilled how far he's come. I think you, great, you, you have a great induction today. I've heard many induction speeches of the, of the Ivy Leagues. Ivy Leagues, I've heard many. This is the rarest of the rare. It's the rarest of the rare. Where I've heard the Harvards, I've heard the Yales, I've heard the Columbians. I've heard I love induction speeches. I preserve some of them. But the kind of induction speech you've had, you don't need more than that. In fact, if you just recall this all the time, he's brought, brought his spirituality in your life, he's brought ethics in your life, and he's brought totally personal discipline in your life. Once you follow that, I think that's a great induction. So congratulations that you have a great teacher here. I'm not appreciating him because he's related to Mr. Wade Martin. <laughs> it's because I've heard it comparatively to what you said to him. First, this uh, issue of uh, gender. I think you need to duck that also as a part of assignments here. Because you are a wonderful mix of young men and women. You've got to design a course. I don't know whether you've designed a course. Have you designed a course? Oh, universal human value city, <laughs> Chalega. Specific human value city, Chalega. Yes, specific, Because there are mindsets complete. Men are coming from, boys are coming, sons are coming from one kind of background. Daughters are coming from another background. You have to bring them both together in the center. One of the main things is, men must learn to cook. Yeah. Teach a cooking class. <laughs> Take a cooking class. A baking class. They have good idea. <laughs> Why are we saying? Because that's where the balance goes. Because a woman goes back to cook after doing a, a eight, ten, ten year, even if she has home support, she goes back to cook. And children also say, Mommy, I want only your food. <laughs> they say, No, Mommy can say, No, you have daddy's food. <laughs> People, home management has to be taught. You are training women to go out to work and be like the men, like the men, because it was male domain. Why not train women, uh, men, something which is not in the, in the domain, but it's a shared time. It's a value for time. When does the balance break? When there's imbalance in time management. Balance breaks that one is only on work and the other is on work plus. What about the others? Why not they also work plus? Just as women work plus, they, men also work plus, and they come together. Now, look, this is happening already in the West. It's not happening yet in India. That's why she's asked this question. In the West, either they don't run kitchens, they get everything, uh, fast food, and they eat, and they bring brown bags and eat, right? But um, this is not happening here yet. And that's where women are still asking this question. I think maybe you would design a course where truly when you uh, uh, convocation them, they're truly into office management and home management. Now, I think one of the major issues which goes wrong is where dinners are never spent together. Dinners are never at home. Men are, or men and women even now, I've te been telling women as well, you are having very important meetings over dinners. You are eating into each other's time. You're eating into rest time. You're eating into family time. I think one of the essential things that should be discouraged is no dinners outside home. Have lunch meetings, have coffee meetings, have breakfast meetings, but not dinners. Because once you have that, you're spending family time with your parents, their aging parents, they also want you. And that's when, and the woman is exhausted. Because when she goes back home, she still has housekeeping to do, home management to do. Children are still looking forward. Homework hua ke nahi, uniform bana ke nahi, pressing hui ke nahi, ghar mein safai hui ke nahi. Elder care, even elder care is not in the um, male domain. Elder care also is only the female domain. That's why she gets exhausted. The exhaustion is there's greater time demand for home management on a working woman than it is on the man. 
this is the time. Please realize this for all times to come. I think it will last at least for another 10, 20 years. And the geriatric care, that's why many families do not want elderly parents with them. Who looks up? There's no medical care at the doorstep. So therefore they go to old age homes or they go elsewhere. They don't know what to do. Why? Because the woman is exhausted and the expectation from the woman is higher to stay back. And she loses her job and she gives up her job or she goes into part time because she's balancing. So do children demand more of the woman because of the mother's needs. So I think this is an area unaddressed. Thank you for raising a very vital question, which has not come yet to all the presentations, but which is a fact of life and which actually when you train up all these brilliant women, they will go back and suffer. And they say, this is what I didn't do. I didn't do our male colleagues. And see, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. वो सिखाएंगे लड़कों लड़कियों को सिखा रहे काम करना अच्छी तरह लड़कों को सिखा रही घर का काम भी करना अच्छी तरह तो जब दोनों जिन्हें मिलके करेंगे यू विल बोथ बी विनर्स बोथ विल बी इक्वली टाइम और इक्वली फ्रेश इट डिपेंड्स सो इज दैट अ बैड आइडिया और गुड आइडिया आई डोंट नो वेदर योर पेरेंट्स लाइक इट मेन बॉयज पेरेंट्स तो हमने तुम्हें एबीएस में खाना बनाने से भेजा Luckily, we have school of AAFT, school of hospitality and tourism, and trust me, it won't be difficult. And I'm going to make it. This is going to be a part of the course now. Lovely. Okay, let's go. So all guys, be ready to go. I'm sure some of you will love it, and some of you may make better cooks. Of course, the best chefs are men. <laughs> best chefs are men with tall, tall topis. <laughs> They're men, so you can be a chef at home. Right? Without the topi. <laughs> so I think, let me tell you how I balanced my life. How I found my balances. Not my husband. He didn't know how to cook. He didn't know how to cook. He only knew how to make an omelette for me. And he was so good that every time he visited me, he made an omelette. It was my mother. But if you, if you were saying that my husband would have done it, he would not have done it. He was not coming from that orientation at all. So I needed a home, a home management, which I had. So I got balanced because of home support and my mother's support. And when you have a mother's support, then you are at home. So that is the biggest blessing in my life was having my mother for many, many years. During my critical time of 24 by 7 work. But none of you are going to have your mothers. Because mothers are also working mothers now. And therefore, they would have their own places and works. So the only way is... How do you manage your time when both of you return home? And if one of them is stretching beyond, well, you've got to compensate. And if you've got parents with you, you both have to equally share. And you've got school-going children, you both equally share. Not one small paternity leave. I think you have raised a very, very vital question. Because this is going to impact your personal lives as well. Impacting men's personal lives when they have a rebel at home saying, yeah, yeah. And number two, are you prepared for child, uh, ch uh, child raising? None of you will. You will not have a play, you will not have care, a home taker. You will not have anybody care, taking care of your child. There are no ayahs anymore. In another few days, you will not have babysitters. So before you become parents, please plan. Who's going to look up? Is a parent going to be home? You see, this is now entering into management of another kind you will learn you're going to learn this this management is not taught in management schools i'm not aware i'm not aware but i think you raised a very vital question grow up to live together work together eat together serve together each other and be helped to each other for your for your home management and similarly parents together don't leave it only to the to the mother alone or a caretaker or a, a somebody who's a babysitter. You don't have babysitters anymore. And companies are not providing baby care. Many companies are not providing baby care. And if baby care is providing, they don't have playway schools. And not only playway schools, you don't have adult adolescent schools. You have a child who's sitting for the 10th standard. There's nobody at home to look after him. These are the real challenges which will hit into your personal relationships. 
emotional um, care for each other. And if the man is going to be spending long hours outside of dinners, and the woman is going to do the, uh, the other work, she'd say, what the hell? You will no more enjoy the kind of care and love you have for each other. I think you first time made me raise this and explain this to you properly, because this is what I see regularly. And that's why this question came. So you raised it correctly. What, what was your question? Yours was also very useful. Yeah. How do you deal with the people who differentiate between How do you deal with this? This is where the answer is come. Your question and her question. Your, your answering your question is the answer to her question. How did I balance? I balanced with my mother. But what's the imbalance? Imbalance is this. Where men and women coming together are thinking still what their mothers and fathers thought. They never went to MBAs. Their mothers were not working. My mom was not working outside the home. That's why she was available. Suppose if she had been working, I would have been here today. And I want to tell you also another thing. Parenting is a very big responsibility. If you don't have time for your children, for God's sake, don't be parents. Please get this message right. If you don't have time for your parents, I say it again, stop being parents. Adopt a child, support a child, educate the child, take care of a child. But if you have time, then one of you calls for time, or two of you call. How do you do it? Because I've seen many children left on their own to televisions and aging grandparents to say fend for yourself, or, an, uh, or a caretaker not reliable. We need bright children, bright parents want bright children. But you know what? Those bright children come at a cost. They come at the cost of, of, one's, of one parent. Either it's a grandparents, either it's a grandparents, or it's a father, or it's a mother. So before you decide to be parents, be very clear how, who, and when, and where, and the methodology. And then number of children. It's how many men. Oh, I've got a daughter, I want a son. Or I have a son, I'm very fond of a daughter. So these are relationships that never become part of the books. Am I right? They don't. I have not seen a chapter of this running home management together. I think you need to read. I have read a lot on Indira Nui. I'll come to the LG's book. But um, if you've read Indira Nui's book, which is the latest also, and I've heard of many, many of her, I'm very fond of her. She really, really suffered through. She reached the top in her company, but bringing up children was a big struggle for her. And that's why she always says, a woman cannot have it all. She continues to say that. And I think women can have it all, provided both, both the couple work together. And she had a very, very supportive husband. She has a very supportive husband. But yet, bringing up children was not an ordinary task. So please read those things and prepare yourself mentally accordingly. Okay, I've tried to explain and not labor on it, but this is a, a warning of, uh, an alert signal. Very good. I'm sure you may be the first such business school to be having courses on this. Maybe, maybe. I've seen them running away from this issue and all the time asking the same question, how do we balance? So I also don't answer this in this way. I don't answer it in this explanation as I did it today because I thought I could delve on this more because you've already got the right nutrition from your from your staff from your faculty okay okay let me talk about my period with the, my time with the as lieutenant governor book friends i want to tell you that you don't start delivering at the age of 68 69 or 67 what you're not what you're not you you actually carry yourself there all the way you you are what you are at the age of 30. You, can, you are a person. You are the professional in that person. So what kind of person you are will be the professional. If you think you can be two different things, you're wrong. You're one in, you're two in one. If you're a good human being, you'll be good human professional. If you are not a good human being, and if you're faking and if you're a hypocrite, it will show one day your shirt will show. When I went to be the Lieutenant Governor Puducherry at the age of 60, maybe 67, 68. I was who I was. I had a few um, very clear convictions and beliefs that public money cannot go waste. Public money is for public, right? Don't cheat people. 
the leadership should become authentic and that everybody must work together. I was very collaborative in my approach. So I came with this kind of attitude of my policing where I was always bringing people together, learned a lot from my mentor, Mr. Marwa, and many others. I learned a lot from him. And I was there as a left in government. But what I saw was opposite. And the opposite was how public money was being squandered. It's like ravery culture. The Prime Minister mentioned ravery culture. <laughs> ravery culture? You, did you hear it? Yes. Ravery culture? Ravery culture. Ab ye wala function festival hai, ravery sanction kar do. Plana ye sanction kar do. Ye sari sanction kar do. Ye, ye uh, tail sanction kar do. Ye sugar sanction kar do. So I started to look at it as a left wing governor. Is it in the budget? It was not in the budget. And then a file would come to me to say, is there a pass either divert kar because that diversion of one head to the other was my responsibility. I did not approve it. When I did not approve it, then came the uh, direct bank transfer from the Prime Minister's office and the uh, Government of India of direct rice money. Rather than rice, rice they, he said, direct transfer, you buy your own rice. Direct money transfer to your banks because of the bank accounts, which are Jandans, fortunately. Direct transfer for sugar. Direct transfer for, for uh, rice, direct transfer for dals, direct transfer. They did not, the politicians of that time did not want direct transfer. They wanted to buy contract. Are Pondicherry market could be enough. Uspe chawal kharid lenge, paisa de do, kharid lenge, fresh chawal kharid lenge, ito ganda chawal, chuhwe wala kharab hua hua chawal. Could you buy fresh when they want to buy store? They said, no, we buy. And buy from where? Contractors in West Bengal, contractors in Hyderabad, all the way. Not on the journey economy. Come here. We will buy. So I said, why? Why do you want? When the market is here, let the economy of all those crores go here. So these were my conflicts. And my beliefs were, I went with my beliefs. I didn't go with compromises. So your beliefs, remember, will sometimes come in conflict. How do you deal with conflict? And I'm sure your faculty will tell you how to deal. I, I have two choices. One is, one is, I have two choices. One is go along with the belief because it's my position. I will hang around being a left-wing governor. And the second was take them on, say sorry, not to prove. It cannot be proved. It's a government of India policy now, and I am bound by the government of India policy. That's the rule now, and I this will be now direct transfer. And there was a huge conflict. The government of the day took me to the courts, took me to Madras High Court, took me to Supreme Courts. They took me to the courts and saying it's illegal, it's a discretion of the elected government, so-called elected government. See what's happening on liquor policy in Delhi today? Same, same situation, same kind of situation. So in this case, they said, so courts went by what the government of India was saying, saying Pondicherry is a union territory, so is Delhi union territory. And it is bound by the government of India's directions because it's a union territory. And we we went by that, but it took me to courts. It kept me in conflict. It kept me in conflict with the political leadership. And when you work in conflict, how do you keep delivering? I think these are some of the challenges I face. It's very well. If you would like the book, this book is available for you. It's on the Kindle also. It's on Amazon. It's called Fearless Governance. Because it's fearless. I was not scared how long I stay there. I only knew this is my belief, this is my conviction, and I'm not here as a 67 year old to undo who I was, just to hang around a position. I'm happy to go back home. But the good news is that the government of India stood by me every time I took these harsh decisions. Because even though there was a lot of conflict and a lot of disharmony, a lot of hostility, a lot of accusation, a lot of cartooning, a lot of bad mouthing. It was just too much. But yet, how did I deliver it uh, for these? That's why it's called fearless governance. So once you want to read a little more, you're interested in more, good practices I followed, how I won the hearts and minds of the people. I opened up the left and governor's office to common man every day. That's what you have been learning. You will learn how you open up as managers, how you open up as leaders, how you make yourself accessible. I was regularly doing 101s with 101s uh, with people. There's a chapter called the 101, where every employee I met 9 to 10, 
every employee, turn by turn, talking to that person. How are you doing? Not saying, calm, kase karo. Itra ye karo. Ye target. No target. Kaisi ho? Ghar kaun chula ta hai? Bache kitne? Maabat ko kaun dekhta hai? Koi ghar mein sab thik hai? Jahan tum koi training liye, kya bohi kar rahe ho? Ki kai yor kar rahe ho? It was a one-to-one, heart-to-heart talk with my employee. And I came to know them by one-to-one. I knew them by, by name, not by uh, their surnames. I got to know them by their first name. I had them in my WhatsApp group. I chatted with them on a regular bit as a left-wing governor. I would call an SHO. I would call an SP. I would call a dev director. I would call an undersecretary. I would call a junior engineer. I would call a head constable. I would call it one-on-one. I used to do one-on-one. I did, you know what? The administration was my friend. People, because of the open house in Raj Devas, every day I was my friend because I was listening to them. And they were telling me everything. Today we are talking about this, our land is broken, our land is broken, no one does not do it. How I dealt with these grievances from the open house as left-wing governor is written in the book. Then, when I found that uh, Pondicherry was running dry completely and nobody was bothered to refurbish and water harvesting since water is a major issue. And I found they had no money. And now when the rain's coming and its water is drying and the sea water is entering the drinking water into the canals and people were now, poor people were buying whiskey. They were buying mineral water. And they had no money and that was an outcry. Nobody's bothered. How do, you, how do you improve the water level of Puducherry? Yeah, unless you de-harvest, hardly you de-silt canals, irrigation, how do you do it? And I, since I was on a weekend rounds, I used to bike a lot. As a left wing governor, I bike. As left wing as managers don't mind biking. Go biking. Go cycling. And go cycling into your market areas. Go anonymous. Say, see how your product is going. Check out what the people are saying. I used to do that. I used to go not anonymous, but I used to be biking taking NCC students, taking beach officers along, taking NGOs along, when used to celebrate many days. But I used to say, so I see some of these grievances. Seeing directly is leadership. Seeing, feeling the pulse is direct leadership. The more you become managers, the less you, the more you further go away from people. In fact, the more you are higher you are, closer you should be to the ground level. Find ways and means to celebrate, as he said, entertainment. Celebrate, play and be with them. So I used to do that. And this morning, uh, uh, water harvesting, there's a chapter in the book called How Did I Make Pondicherry Water Rich? It's a great chapter for all of you. In fact, it's a way I brought private sector into the uh, people pr pr partnership, PPP partnership. How? I went to a stage and they said, we've got no money. We cannot clean. And the uh, farmers were complaining that uh, Madam Ispari, we will neither be able to sow seeds nor there will be no water because there is no cleaning and there will be flooding instead. Because when the rains come and the, the irrigation canals are full and chock up, chock up block, what will happen? Rain will overflow, it will overflow and there will be flooding. And when flooding, there is more disaster. So no water but flooding. And what would government do? Ask for flood money. Flood relief. Give us flood relief. So it's money all the time but now for flood relief. So I said, no way this will happen this year. So what I did was, whichever company, whichever company was close to a particular pond or an irrigation canal, whichever company was using water close to an irrigation canal, I brought them in. I said, see what's happening? You're using the water. You're using water. Pharmaceuticals, whirlpools, MRFs, Lucas, all of them were using water. I said, you are using this people's water. Are you refurbishing it? Are you refurbishing it? They said, no. I said, then you will. That's your responsibility. Because government has no money. Because contractors said, how many karenge? Because paisa nahi regi People will not, we will never get paid. And they have not been paid in the past. So I said, no. We will not give up. As managers, as left wing government, I did not give up. And I said, no. We will find a solution. And I found the INOX the MRFs, the UCAS, the Whirlpools, and many universities join hands. I made them adopt every irrigation canal in Puducherry 
every irrigation canal and I left Pondicherry seven meters high in water level by the time I left. So what I'm saying is there are ways to do it. You go with your own convictions. You go with your own beliefs when you're young. You already come with your, you're already hardwired. You're already wired in attitudes, gender issues, relationships, family issues, money management. You're already coming up. Why? How much you should study? What kind of work will you do? Preference of job. You're already hardwired. You have to open up yourself. In fact, I would suggest you all do a SWOT analysis of your own now. Do a SWOT. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities and what are your threats right now? Then look at it three months again. See whether there's a shift. What are your weaknesses? Have there been a shift? What are your threats? Has there been a shift? Has there been strength strengthened? Have your weaknesses weakened, uh, weakened or have they remaining the same? And it's a confidential SWOT. It's not the teachers asking you. So do your own SWOT analysis. Keep it with you, write the date. Do a quarterly SWOT analysis. All that they've told you, you can then look at, oh, I didn't know this, this is my weakness. Then, then you write, what are the areas you will work next three months? And then rate your own selves. If you want to succeed in life, if you want to be happy in life, because in the end, you're all earning to be happy. Not sad. Money to be happy. Right? Resources to be happy. Friends to be happy. Family to be happy. Right? Happiness is the key. They, so happiness will come from your habits. And SWOT will help you monitor your own self. If you learn to monitor your own self on a regular basis, you'll be happy. Because then you have to modify. You'll not wait for a friend to counsel. Or, so I think add spirituality to your life. Add prayer and yoga to your life. Add fitness to your life, add personal reflection to your life, add the start of the day well with a little, not crowding, but with a little peace of mind in your life, add nature to your life. If you start your day and do your own SWOT and constantly regularly monitor, then what, <laughs> this is exactly what happened in my life at the age of 67. I could work fearlessly. And I'm still remaining healthy and fearless. Thanks to the almighty grace. So I would say you will also do that. And that, to my mind, is the secret of your happiness. You're all coming here for the, your happiness, for the family happiness. And happiness not doesn't come only from money. It's the way you earn the money, the way you use your money, the way you share your money. Very important is sharing your money. The way you are able to help each other through your money the way you are able to contribute to the growth of society. The purpose is not only to be financially independent. Your purpose is a higher purpose, is growth and health of the society as a nation. And as I said, education can last and is nation, your nation. I think each one of you are a diamond. Each one of you has a great potential to change the course the way we manage, the way we generate, the way we um, generate our economy or we manage manage our resource you each one of you if you get it right these next two years and you do your regular self-monitoring of the SWOT then each one of you will hit the, hit the sky anyway think rich think grow rich think Napoleon Hill's book think and grow rich is a must book it's a must book you'll all think and grow rich by your great kind of thinking but you'll all be rich too but in that richness, you will make the society rich, the nation rich, your family is rich, your friends rich. You'll be of strength to help each other, friends. If you are not in a position to grow up to help each other, selfish life will not give you happiness. Forget it. You may be very rich. You might be a, a, a unicorn, etc. But if you are basically unhappy because you're insecure, you don't know what to do with it. You're not giving it away. You're not sharing it you're not enjoying it, then you won't get what you're looking for is having money. Financial independence also means interdependence. How do you interdependent? How do you nurture your family? So friends, I've said a lot. I've tried to say and reiterate what has not been said earlier, but how do you consolidate this all and then build on it and benefit from it? I'd like to come back to you 
two years from now, when you're graduating, uh, maybe a one hour session I'd like to, then I will share with you this model. I have a presentation on this model. I'll share with you how I did it. I have a visual model. And then I will share with you certain qualities which you must leave with, which you will already know, but you will leave with and I'll reiterate for you, for which are very good for the private and the public sector. God bless you.